Guys, I just finished watching Smile. So, I'm not gonna lie, this movie actually has me a little bit worked up right now. It was very tough to stomach. I'm someone who's um, very emotionally cut off and very apathetic in general. It's very hard to like elicit feelings from me. And I thought I lost the ability to really uh, feel stuff like this. But um, this movie got it out of me. This, like, I'm actually happy that I watched this movie, even though it is by far the most disturbing and terrifying movie I've ever subjected myself to. I'm glad I watched it because it's been a long time since I felt like this, and this one was really, really uh, full of weight. Like, this is a movie that is... When I take a first look at this movie, I see, or I expect, a disposable, gimmicky, kind of throwaway movie about an evil guy that smiles. Not the case at all. Um, if anything, the smiling is actually the least relevant thing uh, to talk about, really. I, I feel like the smiling is just a, uh, exactly what it is, it's just a interesting little gimmick to uh, sell some tickets. That's absolutely not what the movie is for or about, really. Um, really, the smiles, all the smiling does is just connect the string of suicides together and nothing more. So, yeah, this movie, I'm, I'm, I'm really lost right now in shambles, but uh, I want to just drive home the point that this movie is absolutely incredible. So this is written and directed by Parker Finn, and this is the first time I've seen a movie by him before. And honestly, he makes someone like Ari Aster look like an amateur. Um, like, I loved Midsommar, but like, this is, this is out of Midsommar's league, and uh, this is way superior to Her Hereditary as well, so... Yeah, basically this is the scariest movie I've ever watched, the most disturbing movie I've ever watched, and um, maybe not the most impactful, but one of the most impactful. So just, it gets everything right. It, it really, really does. And there are some like very minor gripes I could take with the film, but you know, I obviously didn't have room to put that in my written review, and I'm not even sure how much I'll talk about that now because it's just so irrelevant in hindsight considering the whole experience, so. Okay, so what is this about? We're following a psychiatrist who uh, whose mother committed suicide, which will be relevant. Sort of like a red herring thing where it's like, you think that's maybe what's going on, um, but not really. So she's just a psychiatrist with a very hard work life. She works 80 hours a week, she doesn't really get any sleep, and she had, deals with a lot of unstable Patients who toll on her mental health, of course, even if she tries not to let it affect her, obviously it is going to. And then she, uh, unfortunately, a patient under her care uh, commits suicide and um, she's left, you know, a bit traumatized and shocked, so she's given a week off. But then she realizes that um, what her patient was saying was actually true and then it sort of mimics the situation that the patient was in where the patient was like, you're not believing me, you're not listening, and then she starts saying the exact same things the patient did as well. So basically it is this uh, entity demon, one of the more powerful supernatural demons in a movie like this. Like This to me feels like an unwinnable situation. I feel like the only way to win this is to commit suicide completely by yourself. I don't think the whole living alone thing's going to work out, which she tries to do. Um, obviously I'm not going to tell anyone or like, you know, they're fictional characters so it's not a huge deal, but um, even though they're fictional, I would still not want any fictional characters to commit suicide, of course. Um, but, um, you know, that is, I think that is objectively the only way to stop this uh, loop, this curse, is to uh, bite the bullet and kill yourself while nobody looks at you. That's pretty much the only way to beat it, as far as I can tell. Otherwise, it's basically invincible and unstoppable and your doom is inevitable, so. Okay, so I'm starting to calm down a little bit more now that I'm starting to uh, um, analyze it a bit more, so. Yeah, it is a supernatural demon thing that looks particularly creepy. Um, I, I thought of a few words to describe it, but I'm worried I'll offend someone, so I'll just keep those to myself. Um, but let's just say it looks very uncanny and disturbing, and um, it makes, like, you know how this, this does like the hidden villain correctly. A lot of horror movies, they show their villain too quickly and it ruins it. 
this movie does it perfectly. You do not get to see the actual thing itself until the very end. It's very brief, and it's so cool, the scenes they made with that as well. Absolutely crazy. I don't want to spoil it, but I'm just getting goosebumps thinking about that last scene that's like straight out of The Thing or Alien. Just crazy. So, yeah, um, she just needs to stop the curse, and uh, the only person that's willing to listen to her is her ex-boyfriend, uh, who is a cop, which is quite convenient for her, plot-wise. Um, but I, I'm able to forgive it, actually. It's not quite as bad as some other horror movies when it comes to, like, convenient side characters. So, yeah, let's hop into it. So, why is this movie so good? Well, I feel that everything about it is terrifying for the entire runtime. This is a movie that is shocking, suspenseful, and just disturb downright disturbing and bone-chilling for every second of its runtime. That's why it's taken such a toll on me is because other horror movies, they'll have their moments, like, you know, there'll be a scene here and a scene there that will, like, kind of scare you and shock you, but this movie is sheer pain start to finish, but it's not, like, a, a bad pain. It's a intriguing and suspenseful pain, and you really want to see things get concluded. So it's uh, just pure pain start to finish in a good way, if that makes sense. Um, it's just from the sound... The imagery, the way they're shooting it, the subject matter, the characters, what they're saying, uh, the themes, of course, the dialogue. It's just, it's, it just, everything about it is so upsetting. That's, that's the perfect word to describe this movie, upsetting. And just, it's not just like upsetting in one area, it's upsetting in every single area. So that creates a giant typhoon of negative emotions that just hit the viewer as hard as it possibly can. And it's really hard to stomach. This is a very hard movie to sit through. I can't imagine seeing this in the theater or watching it with other people. I'm glad I watched it by myself. I would not want to watch this with someone else because I would not be able to um, contain my feelings, basically. So this one was just really, really tough. It was like a piece of chicken that's really tough to chew through. It's just, you know... There's, it's all, it's actually, what I expected was fluff and gimmickry, and what I got was substance and just terrifying everything. You know, like I said, it is an invisible villain the entire time, but like, I don't think I've ever been this afraid of an on-screen character before. And just the smiling itself, again, while the smiling's not super prevalent, like, that smile is creepy, man. I do not like that smiling at all. So, yeah, this is definitely the scariest movie I've ever seen. I don't necessarily want to see something of this extremity ever again, but I am glad I saw this once. Yes, I own it, but no, I'm not going to watch this again. It's just too much for me. Um, you can go see my review for Hereditary and also Black Phone. Those are two movies that were also kind of at a similar level to this, but um, this was a step further. This was a step further from Midsommar. Like, Midsommar looks like child's play in comparison to this. If you don't believe me, just watch them both. Like, Midsommar has some serious stuff, don't get me wrong. But, like, it has moments of respite and moments of breaks. But this one is just constant terror, unrelenting, never stops. And not in the... It's not, like, jump scare heavy. It's just unsettling and upsetting subject matter. And it just punches you into the ground and doesn't give you a moment's rest. So, this is the only evil movie that I will be giving a very high score. Uh, well, I guess Midsummer's evil, but it's not really. I mean, I'm Swedish, so I kind of got a kick out of Midsummer. I thought it was kind of funny here and there. But um, Smiles, there's no, there's not a single funny thing about it. There's not one single... Actually, no, there is one single comedy line, uh, which is when the receptionist says, I'm single. That's the one single joke in the movie. That was the one time I chuckled. Um, but other than that, no lightheartedness in, in this at all. Just complete masochism, terror and unsettling this. And I'm not, I'm not hiking this up. It's actually that bad. If you don't believe me, just go watch it yourself. I don't want to turn around the cover because it has the picture of the entity on it. So I don't want to spoil that for you because it's particularly disturbing looking as well. So yeah, it's a movie without a happy ending with, um, where basically the protagonist, a good, very good person, gets her entire life crumbles um, in every single area because she's being tormented by this evil demon who simply doesn't really have like a motive or anything. It's just more of a, you know, I just want everyone to suffer kind of thing. So it's just pure evil and just sadness, right? 
So she, you know, it's, oh yeah, another thing, it's weird, um, not a criticism, but just something interesting to note. This is a 2022 movie that features an interracial uh, relationship um, and actually doesn't go the direction it normally does. Usually when you have an interracial relationship in today's world, uh, they try to make it this really wholesome and normal thing, right? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's not normal, I'm just saying that's what they purposely portray, right? It's like virtue signaling. Uh, but this movie, it's, um, it takes a twist because it actually does reverse diversity, where uh, her black partner is actually the worst piece of shit ever. He's by far the worst uh, character, like morally, of all of them. So <laughs> it's, it was just interesting to me. I just wanted to mention that I've never seen that before, where you have an interracial relationship go south so fast. And then it turns out to be the white ex-boyfriend, who's a cop, actually turns out to be the hero of the story. I, I think I'm looking too much into it. I highly doubt the right, like, I highly doubt the director and writer, who's the same person, was, like, purposely doing that. It just, it just stuck out to me, because that never happens in movies, so. Yeah, uh, Smile. It has to get a 10 out of 10. Most disturbing movie I've ever seen. I never want to watch it ever again. Um, maybe, I mean, I feel like this is actually, like, T low key torture. Like, I was just gonna say, maybe the only reason I'd watch this again is if I wanted to, like, really upset, like, a friend. Or, like, not in a mean way, but, like, in a, you know, you're so desensitized to horror kind of way. Wait till you watch this, it will ruin your life kind of way. Uh, but, like, that feels like torture almost. Like, that does, I don't know if that's morally right. It doesn't sound morally right when I say it out loud. So, smile, gonna be permanently left on my uh, shelf, 10 out of 10. Um, only watch this movie if you want to be scarred for